What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Brian Garcia Torado and this is Torado Racing. So in today's video, I wanted to give you guys a more in-depth look at the Ram Daytona that I just bought. So in the last uh, episode, you saw the announcement of the Ram Daytona and I sort of showed you guys the adventure I went on to get it. But today's video, I want to once again show you guys an up close and personal look at it. I want to show you guys the good, the bad, and the ugly. So with that being said, sit back, relax, and enjoy today's video. Here we are. First of all, I love filming in this spot. It's always quiet. There's a nice breeze today. It's not too hot. Um, so yeah, so here we go. Let's start, uh, start with the outside of the truck here. Um, so from the front, everything looks really good. This headlight is really clear. Uh, this headlight starting to get a little bit of a cataract here. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but I do plan on changing both of these headlights out to the black ones with the clear corner. Uh, I just think it looks cleaner on a silver truck. Uh, really cool thing is that this front lip is extremely hard to find for the uh, Ram Daytona. And this one still has the OEM one. It's not a fiberglass uh, remade ones. And they, those usually don't fit as well on these trucks. And the other thing I want to change out is this grill right here. I want to do a black grill so it matches the honeycomb and the uh, hood scoop right here. So for the front, for the most part, that's pretty much it. Um, the paint is really good in the front, but the previous owner did tell me he had a small accident. So he had the front uh, resprayed. And the bumper alignment isn't 100%. So right here, it sort of sticks out a hair. But then over here, it sticks out like an inch. So that's something I want to do is realign the bumper so it sits nice and flush. Uh, other than that, there's really not too many complaints for the front end. You know, this truck is close to 15 years old and it looks really good. Uh, going to the side, um, you can tell this truck definitely sat like in the sun on this corner and you can see this piece of plastic right here the sun just ate it up and i really like the look of these so i don't want to get rid of them i really just want to get them repainted and as we keep moving down along the side here there's a small dent in the door here and you can still see the uh, scuff mark from whatever he uh you know ran up across and again it's not even that bad i think you know a dentless paint repair could pull that right out no issues and the other thing is of course i mentioned in the last video it's missing the daytona ram side steps now the daytona side steps are they're, they're actually running boards they're not side steps and they take the molding and the shape of the truck right here and they're up real uh real close to the truck and there's another piece right here that'll finish off the body kit as you can see it right there in the back of the truck still has this uh, factory chrome fuel door they came with and if you guys know me i don't like any chrome on my vehicles that's why i took all the chrome off my challenger and the only thing left chrome on the challenger is the exhaust tips and i already have black ones i'm gonna throw on there so when it comes to this truck, again, I'm going to stick with my, you know, D-Chrome. I know Chrome is sort of the era that this, uh, these trucks and these vehicles are about, but I'm going to D-Chrome it, and I want to do a nice set of black uh, Viper wheels, maybe some Viper reps, nothing too crazy. Get a black uh, uh, fuel door there, and of course, get my side steps. Uh, the decals. Every single Daytona I looked at, and this was something I had to really think about when I was looking at them, is like I said, they're like 15 years old. So these decals were always uh, faded like this from the sun. So you can see the, the decal is in dark, it's not rich, it's been faded from the sun. Uh, so these definitely need to get replaced. And that's a nice spot to bird poo right there. So it does have the lower body kit here in the back, as you can see. Um, so let's go with the, uh, the rear bumper here. It's got its nicks, it's got its scratches, it's got its dents. Someone's gonna say something about the license plate, but I'm getting rid of these, so I'm not worried about it. But you can see here it's backed up into something. The paint's flaking, it's chipping, it's rusting. There's another dent up here. These lights right here, they're real faded from being old. I'm gonna replace all of this eventually. And of course, paint it to get uh, color matched. Uh, one good thing is the rear tailgate. There's really nothing on it. This is just a scuff, it's not a dent. Uh, the SLT badge is peeling up. Now this tail light is, it does have the cover here and it started to peel off, but I know these covers are extremely hard to find. But I really want to do a cleaner look and just do tail lights without these covers. Maybe swap them over in the future. I'm not really too sure. Now this is one of the super cool things about this truck is it came with a factory Borla exhaust. So you can see the exhaust tips say Dodge and Borla. Now they're real dirty, but I think I can clean them up. And if you look on the inside, if I can see it on camera, they're actually resonated tips, but it gives it a nice deep tone and they sound really good. And this decal, uh, not too beat up like the other one. It's a little darker in color, a little richer. And the other side, like you say, you can definitely tell the truck sat with the sun facing on the other side. So, you know, there's a dent on that side. 
the tail light on this side, this sticker's good, that sticker's not so good. And the very last thing is that it's missing the uh, Daytona wing. Uh, the previous owner uh, did have the truck bedlined, so the holes are covered from where the wing would go. But I looked underneath and you could see clearly, where, I'm touching it right now, where the wing would bolt into. So not a big deal. I'll probably have to sand some of this down, get a new wing, get it painted, put it on. So onto the passenger side. Actually, a lot of guys, there's one thing I did change. There was this strip right here to protect it from like dinging the door. And I can't stand that stuff, so I took it off and threw it away. But like I said, I haven't even washed the truck. So I'm gonna have to get all that dirty out of it. So for the passenger side, as you can see, it needs a rear tail light, it needs a spoiler. I'm gonna replace both stickers, it needs the side steps. And that's really it. There's no dings or dents. Just need to clean it up. It's got this little bullet antenna here, which is pretty neat, I guess. Better than that big RC car looking antenna that sticks up. And there's actually one more little dent right up here. Forgot to mention that. But again, nothing too crazy. And pretty much when I get to it, I want to respray the entire truck and probably end up painting those stripes uh, on the back versus them just being decals. And I'll line this bumper up here in the front. So for the most part, that's everything around uh, the body on the Daytona. So let's jump on the inside. All right, I'm not gonna lie guys, like the inside of this truck, I'm actually like super pleased with, like super happy with it because if you guys know, or if you've owned a third gen Ram, they're usually pretty roached out on the inside. Like the dash is cracked and falling apart. And with this being my second um, third gen Ram, my first one was 2500, but the dash, um, not the big pad itself, but where the vents are was completely cracked and falling apart. I got really lucky because this one isn't like that. All right, first things first is we've got the Daytona badging, Daytona uh, door panels here. And these are usually the color of the truck. Now, Daytona's only came in two color, and that's Go Mango and the uh, silver metallic. So my door panels are silver. Uh, moving on to the dash, like I was talking about, it's clean, no cracks. Got a clean headliner. Very well kept. And then in the center console, you've got the matching dash bezel. And of course, the number Daytona. Mine is uh, 9145 now. You got your change cubby. Got my chapstick in there, some change already. And your cup holders. Gotta clean all this up. So yeah, cup holders, change cubby, 12 volt outlet, cigarette lighter. And of course your AC and a freaking stock radio. Guys, let me tell you this thing is like ancient it's like messing with like ancient technology here and it actually works okay you turn the volume knob up and the volume goes down you turn the volume down and it goes down um, so it's it's a lot of fun so I definitely want to change out the uh, sound system for sure uh, we stuck a CD in here Ashley and I just reminiscing on some old music and it got stuck in there so I got this one CD that will play in there and I can't change it uh, so over here let's look at the seats you got the other door panel nice and clean no tears, all the windows work. Obviously, I got them all down here. The seat is clean. Usually on these Rams, the center console is cracked. Uh, the leather dries up and it cracks. This one's nice. So you got some CDs, got my phone charger in there. Third seat is nice. You can see the sun, where the sun's been fading it or affecting it here. Driver's seat, it's nice and clean. And check this out, it's a power seat. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, wow. It's old news there, buddy. Going on to the back seat. Door panels are nice. Again, very well kept. Uh, the carpet uh, needs to be cleaned. I'm probably gonna end up just pulling this carpet out and replacing the entire thing, because we got a little hole right here. And I just, sometimes like to get that old car smell out of there, the easiest thing to do is just take the carpet out and replace it. Clean these cubby holes right here. I got, these are my uh, straps in here. Just needs a good vacuum in and out. This is actually from my old Ram and vacuum out the rest in here. But again, nothing crazy. For how old the truck is, it is super clean. These back seats are clean. I mean, seat belts work, everything works. Super stoked. So that's the inside of the Ram. Like I said, it's, I mean, it's an older vehicle. It's an 05, but it, it's very well kept. Another thing is, dude, the AC blows like super cold in here and this truck rides like super smooth. I could fall asleep, I swear. So gotta change that. Uh, one thing I never liked about the third gens, and maybe it's because newer cars come this way, but newer cars all come with like a full black interior. For example, you look at the pillar here, it's black halfway up, and then the other half, it's tan. And you can see it over here as well, and of course, a tan headliner. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to take all this stuff off, 
and I'm gonna paint it all and I'm gonna redo the headliner all of these plastics right here I'm gonna redo them all in black with a black suede headliner and I'm probably gonna reupholster my uh, sun visors here just because I want an all black interior I think it looks better uh, the windows are already tinted um, so I don't really have to worry about that one thing I would like to change though is put a sun strip in the front here to keep you know uh, when the sun's coming down out from you know blowing your eyes out so I'm probably gonna add a sun strip here you know I'm gonna see my boy ish window tint uh, so but for the most part that's the interior I want to black out the interior the seats are fine uh, add a little bit of window tint upgrade the stereo probably add a sound system in here uh, and for the interior that should wrap things up oh and a new carpet uh, but the business end of things for this vehicle is definitely going to be you know engine suspension you know that's going to be the meat and potatoes so let's talk about that that's right the almighty hemi let's see what we got here Pull this bad boy up all right guys this is your typical truck engine 57 hemi okay these things came with about 345 horsepower from the factory and with this being a daytona model it's actually got a 392 uh, rear gear ratio so for as big as this truck is it actually gets up you know and moves pretty good but not good enough for me so with the 57 engine hemi as you guys can see this thing is completely stock which is exactly what i wanted stock intake it's got a new air filter in there um stock suspension stock exhaust manifolds i mean there's still there's so much like low-hanging fruit on this truck to make it better uh like i just can't wait to get you know started on it here's some more of the bad right here this is just the windshield washer fluid reservoir it's just cracked right here it's got a little duct tape because you know duct tape fixes everything uh and that's keeping all the washer fluid in there so of course you know see three quarter leak gonna go ahead and just order one off amazon or ebay or something um, but the real goal with this one thing is you guys know it's more power babies So at the end of the day guys, it's pretty it's still a big truck But I want to do is get this truck breathing better, right? And that's how I start with all my builds is just get it breathing better from the get-go So put some long tubes on here put some maybe a good shorty set of headers keeping the Borla muffler in the back in the tips uh, Get an intake and a tune. So that's pretty much the start of it And for the future I'm thinking about working with either Texas speed and performance and using one of their cams in here and their tuning uh, to really wake this thing up and Knowing my Hemi's, this is my second one now, these things absolutely hate heat, yet they run super hot. So I'm probably gonna add some more coolers like I did on my Challenger and uh, keep this thing uh, running nice and cool. And for the most part, guys, I'm just trying to keep this engine simple and reliable and just a little more powerful. I'm not trying to race this thing, I, but I do want it to be faster, if that makes sense. Like I said, she's pretty quick for how old and how big she is. But now let's, let's talk about some, something else that I really wanna do. And that's pretty much the stance of the truck. So right now, I mean, you know, it's pretty low. It's a 1500 and I don't even use the side steps to get in and out of it, but I do want to lower this thing. So I think from the get go, I'm going to do is like a three, five drop and lower the front a little bit and then level out the rear. Well guys, there you have it. That about wraps up today's video. I just want to show you guys a more up close and personal look at the truck so you can see where I started. You know, with the Challenger, we kind of dove right in because I had already been working on it, but I didn't document anything. So with this truck, this is a clean slate and I can document everything from the beginning. Um, I really love doing engine stuff, so for the first time I'm going to document more of that. The first engine video I did, which was kind of rebuilding my Challenger, I kind of just rushed through it. I didn't really go in depth, so with this truck I would like to go in depth. And a lot of people are going to say, like, why did I choose, you know, a Dodge Ram? Well, first of all, I love the way these things look, right? I love trucks, and I've always wanted to do a, speed, uh, a street truck like I spoke about in the last video. And I know people are going to say, why didn't you get a SRT10? And the honest truth is, I love the way the Daytona looks more than the Ram SRT10. Now, I love the fact that the SRT10 Ram has a Viper engine in it. Um, but again, I just love the way these look more. And I love the fact that they're numbered. I think it's super cool. And I know a lot more about the Hemi. And I can work on it more than I think I could with the uh, Viper engine. That's not to say that I couldn't beef up the Viper engine. I could always figure it out. But I'm more comfortable with this truck. And my goal isn't to really, like I said, make this truck super fast. I just wanna make it faster. And I am gonna be daily driving it for the time being. Just because I'm working on the truck now, it doesn't mean I'm gonna stop working on the Challenger. Getting the truck now and driving it kind of as is, is actually allowing me to change some more things on the Challenger and focus on it a little more now that I'm not driving it every day. Um, so more Challenger videos are to come. Some track day videos are gonna come. I need to pretty much dial in all the changes I made over this extended winter break. <laughs> so I need to get the car out on track. I need to change suspension. I need to change a lot of my um, 
alignment. I put some new sway bars in there. I put some different bushings. So some stuff that I didn't really put on camera when I did the engine stuff that I added in there. So I really need to see how the car reacts. And of course, I'll get all that stuff on video for you guys. Um, for now, I'm going to end today's video on that note. The next video, I'm going to show you guys what I used to clean my Challenger because on my last Instagram post, what I said was true. I've always used Meguiar's products and people have been asking me like, what do I do to make my Hemi Orange paint, you know, look so deep and rich. So what I'm going to do is show you guys on pretty much this truck. As you can see, it's dirty. I haven't washed it. So I think it's a perfect time to use this as an example of how I can, you know, bring that paint back nice, deep and rich. So uh, be on the lookout for that video. So with that being said, guys, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you love these videos, smash the subscribe button. And of course, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think and let me know what you guys want to see. So until next time, guys, peace out.